here we go with lesson 10, section 6.5, trigonometric graphs. We're going to be doing some graphing. Now we're going to start out with a couple simple ones here, y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. Uh, first one here is y equals sine x. We're going to graph it between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Now this graph goes in both directions forever and ever, but we're going to look at a window here between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Notice I strike off four hash marks to the right of the y-axis and four hash marks to the left. I have pi over 2 intervals on both sides. The y-axis goes from negative 1 to 1, because that's all you get with sine x. And there's your graph. And you've seen this before, but notice if you put 0 in for x, you get 0 for sine. If you put pi over 2 in for x, you get 1 for sine. The sine of pi is 0. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the sine of 2 pi is 0. Your amplitude is 1. Amplitude is the distance from the average to the max or from the average to the min. Your period is 2 pi. In 2 pi ratings, you can see the whole thing. It's one full cycle. The domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. You can put anything you want in for x and hit sign, and it's going to return something. You'll never get a division by zero error. The range of the possible values of y, it's negative 1 to 1. Let's move on to the cosine curve. Graph the equation between negative 2 pi and 2 pi again. And again, it's, this goes from negative infinity all the way to infinity. But we're going to look at a small window here of it. Same layout for the x and y axis. Slightly different graph than the sine curve. Not much, though. It's really just moved over uh, 90 degrees. But again, plug and chug. Put 0 in for x, and cosine of 0 is 1. Put pi over 2 in. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The cosine of pi is negative 1. And the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And the cosine of 2 pi is 1. And so there's one full cycle right there. See the whole thing? And that's why my period is, or the period of, two, of cosine is 2 pi. The amplitude is still 1, distance from the average to the max, distance from the average to the min. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. Again, you can put anything you want in for x. You'll never get a division by zero error. And the range, possible values of y, is negative 1 to 1. So these are your base. These are your base um, graphs. And then we're going to play with it. We're going to put values in front of the sine of the cosine. We're going to put values in front of the x value, and then we're going to add subtract values inside the parentheses here. So instead of y equals sine x or y equals cosine x, we're going to have y equals a sine bx plus c, or y equals a cosine bx plus c. This a will affect the amplitude, the b will affect the period, and the c value will move the graph right or move the graph left. So what we're going to do, we call that the phase shift, by the way. We're going to stretch this thing horizontally, we're going to stretch and compress this thing vertically, and we're going to move it right and left. We will not move it up and down. So given this formula, your amplitude is always the absolute value of A. Amplitude is always positive. Now A can be negative, and when A is negative, it actually flips the graph over the x-axis. We'll, we'll see that a little later. But when we report the amplitude, we always report a positive value, regardless of whether A is positive or negative. Your period is 2 pi over b, and absolute value of b, excuse me. And uh, again, the period is always positive, even though b can be negative. And if b is ever negative, you flip the graph over the y-axis. You change the x values, um, negative and positive. And so again, period will always be positive, 2 pi over b. And the phase shift, that's where we're moving it right or left. And the phase shift, if uh, given that b is positive, if the C is positive, you're actually moving the graph left. And if the C is negative, you're actually moving it right. This formula for phase shift, negative C over B, again, this negative takes that lie out of it. And I got, I'm got going to point here. When B is bigger than 1, it actually shrinks the graph. It makes the period smaller. When B is between 0 and 1, it actually stretches it and makes the graph larger. When given B positive, if C is positive, the graph moves left, and if C is negative, the graph moves to the right. So inside the parentheses here, it really does the opposite of what it initially appears. Out here, A, it does exactly what you think it ought to do. If there's a 2 out here, it'll make it twice as tall. If there's a half out here, it'll make it half the size. So outside the parentheses seems to tell the truth. Inside the parentheses, it lies like a dog. Here's our first one, rather simple one. We're going to find the amplitude period and phase shift, or excuse me, and sketch the graph. There is no phase shift on this one. Uh, y equals 4 sine x. 
uh, it's in the form of A sine BX. There is no C here, so there's no phase shift. So your amplitude is the absolute value of A, which will be 4, and your period is the absolute value of or 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Now our b here is 1, so our period is going to go ahead and be just 2 pi. I always put 4 hash marks to the right, 4 hash marks to the left. I put the period out here, so that's 2 pi way out here. I cut it in half, there's pi. Cut it in half, there's pi over 2. Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And because my amplitude is 4, I go from negative 4 to 4. That's my range, negative 4 to 4. There's no phase shift, so the sine curve normally goes up through the origin, up to the max, and back down to the average, and down to the min, and back down to the average. And so this is what we're going to see, and this is just really from just plugging and chugging. And you can put 0 in for x, you can put pi over 2 in for x, you can put pi in for x. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we end up with um, putting 0 in for x. Okay, I went ahead and, 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 and graphed it. But again, this, this idea that we go from average to max to average to min to average in what's called quarter period increments. Every quarter period, we move from an average to a max to an average to a min and back to an average. It goes up and, and just repeats itself over and over and over again. So this is why I like to strike it off in four quarters. All right, here we go with uh, 2 sine 1 fourth x. So now we're going to have an amplitude of 2. Our period is being affected by this 1 fourth, and there's still no phase shift. So there's no value for c. So our amplitude is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. We're going to go up from between, we're going to go between negative 2 and 2 will be our range. And the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of b. So that's 2 pi over 1 fourth, multiply by the reciprocal, and you get 8 pi. Here's an example where normally multiplying by 1 fourth makes things smaller but our, our period ends up getting stretched to 8 pi. And the reason for that is this really slows us down. Every time you put an x value in here, you cut it down by a factor of 4. So it takes 4 times longer to get through this thing. So I put 8 pi out here to the right, and I put 4 pi in the middle and 2 pi here and 6 pi right there. I always, I, I always do 4 hash marks to the right and 4 hash marks to the left. I always put the period at the fourth hash mark, cut it in half, Cut it in half, add them together. That's how you get your third spot. Negative 2 to 2. There's no phase shift. It's the sine curve. We normally hit the, go through the origin and our way up. And there we are. Go through the origin. We go up, down, down, and up. And we're going in quarter period increments. And that's why I strike off four hash marks to the right and strike off four hash marks to the left. Put the period out here. Cut it in half, cut it in half. All right, let's do a cosine curve here. This is 1 half cosine x. And my a is 1 half. My b is 1. There is no c value, so there is no phase shift. Uh, your, your period is going to go ahead and do 2 pi. And I put 4 hash marks to the right, 4 hash marks to the left. And we normally intersect the y-axis at the max, which we do here. The difference being because our amplitude is a half, we only go up to a half and we only go down to negative a half. And that was predictable because outside the parentheses, it does exactly what it seems to do. So this is pretty much the cosine curve, just squished a little bit um, vertically. Now here's one, negative 3 cosine 2x. So we have a negative on the outside, and that negative is going to flip it over the y-axis out here. I'm, I'm sorry, it's going to flip it over the x-axis. It's going to change the y values from positive to negative to negative to positive. And this 2 in here is going to squish the, 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 it's going to make the period smaller. So it's going to squish it right to left. So our amplitude is 3, even though that was a negative 3. Our amplitude is always positive. Period is always positive as well, but in this case it was 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So I put pi at the fourth hash mark, cut it in half, cut that in half. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. I go from negative 3 to 3. Now, what's different here? Well, normally, there is no phase shift, so we're not moving this thing right or left. Normally, we intersect the y-axis at the max, but that negative 3 flipped it over the x-axis. And you, you don't have to take my word for it. Put 0 in for x. 0 times 2 is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 
you know, and think about it. Once you've bottomed out, there's only, only one place to go, and that's up. And so we go in quarter period increments. And I like quarter period increments because it makes my life easier. Well, let's look at this one. This is cosine of negative 2x. And our amplitude is 1. And our period is the absolute value there. So that was the absolute value of 2, negative 2. So we ended up with 2 pi over 2 again. So we end up with pi. So I put pi out here. Now the negative on the inside flips it over the y-axis. So what do we have here? We have a positive 1 here. So we're going to intersect this thing. We normally go down. But instead, we're going to flip over and go this way. And you're going to notice something here. It looks exactly the same. And the reason for that is we had a theorem a while back that said that the cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine theta. Uh, that's true. That negative actually disappears. There is no difference between cosine negative 2x and cosine 2x. And the reason it looks the same is it's an even function. And even functions are symmetric to the y-axis. So normally we would be going down to the right, but because of the negative 2 on the inside, we went down to the left, which actually didn't make any difference, did it? It looks exactly the same. That was just kind of a trick question there. All right, moving on. All right, we're going to throw some phase shifts in here then. I want to remind you phase shift is negative C over B. That's where we're moving it right or left. And here's our first one. We're going to have A is 1, so the amplitude will be 1. B is 1, so the period will still be 2 pi. But now we've got this negative pi over 2, and I told you it lies like a dog inside the parentheses. So normally negative moves it left, but in this case it's going to move it to the right. So the amplitude is 1, the period is 2 pi, phase shift is negative c over b, so that's the negative of negative pi over 2 over 1, b is 1, so that ends up being a positive pi over 2. The phase shift is true, so if the phase shift is positive, you're moving the graph to the right. And so here I'm demonstrating that normally the sine curve has a point here at the origin, and we go up to the right, but the phase shift says move that point to the right pi over 2 radians. You could move any point you want to to the right. I just find it easier to move that origin point either right or left depending on the phase shift is positive or negative however far the phase shift tells me to move it and then I move in quarter period increments. And look at there. We start here. We go to the right. We're going up to the right. I go up quarter period down down and then I back it up the other way. So now this is kind of looking like that negative cosine curve, and it, and it really is the negative cosine curve if you think about it. But once I have that anchor point, I kind of know what I'm doing. Now I will say this, had that been a negative in front of the sign, instead of going up here, I would have gone down. And that's just a small point there. Well here's sine of 2x plus pi. So my a is 1, my b is 2, and my c is pi. So that's kind of unique. Uh, what we got here, a is 1, so the amplitude is 1. The period is pi, 2 pi divided by 2. And the phase shift is negative c over b, so that's going to be negative pi over 2. And again, it was added in here, giving us we had a positive 2 here. We were adding, so that actually meant we're moving left when you normally think that adding would move it to the right. It always lies inside the parentheses. All right, so amplitude is 1, the period is pi, so I put pi out here to the right, pi over 2, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. And again, the sine curve normally goes up through the origin, so I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to move it negative pi over 2. And so, but, but I'm going to go to the right from this point, so I'm still going to go in quarter period increments. So from that point, this is the point I moved. I go to the right, I go back down, I go to, and so really what this really Im imitates is the negative sine curve. Normally the sine goes up through the origin, this one's going down. We actually could have eliminated this phase shift, put a negative in front, and we'd have gotten the exact same graph. There's usually more than one way to describe every trigonometric graph. This one had a phase shift of negative pi over 2 with a positive A value, but there's lots of ways we can describe these. All right, 5 cosine pi x, there is no c value here. c is 0, rather, so there is no phase shift. Amplitude is 5, but this is kind of unique. 2 pi divided by pi is 2. So I put 2 out here. That's just 2 radians. You don't have to have a pi there. Half of 2 is 1. Half of 1 is a half. Half, 1, 3 halves, 2. Yeah, that's how that works. It's a cosine curve, so we normally intersect the y-axis at the max. And here we go again. There was no negative here, so I'm going to start at the max. 
And as in life, when you're on top, there's only one way to go, and that's down. And we move in, say it with me, quarter period increments. That's why I put the period out here and I back it up. All right, this is 2 sine pi over 3x. Again, no value for C there, so we have no amp, we have no phase shift. Our amplitude is 2. 2 pi divided by pi over 3. And so uh, when I do that, I end up with, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator, I end up with 6. So my period is 6, my phase shift is nothing, my amplitude is 2. So I stick 6 out here. Half of 6 is 3, half of 3 is 3 halves. So then I go 3 halves, 6 halves, 9 halves. It's a sine curve with no phase shift, so we normally you know, go through the origin. And then we go up to the right quarter periods. And so this is going to look like, well, a sine curve. They all look the same. All we do is change the x-axis and the y-axis. There's not a whole lot of difference in any of these. I know you don't like graphing, but these aren't that painful. All right, negative 2 sine pi over 3x. Let's see what that negative does to us. Our amplitude is still 2. Our period is still 6, and we still don't have a phase shift. But there is a negative 2 hanging out out there. So I set up the same graph we had before. I got 6 for my period. Half of 6 is 3. Half of 3 is 3 halves. 3 halves, 6 halves, 9 halves. We still have the origin. If you put 0 in for x, pi over 3 times 0 is 0. 2 sine of 0 is 0. 2, negative 2 times 0 is 0. But because of the negative 2 here, instead of going up to the right, we go down to the right. And again, you don't have to trust me on this. You can try it yourself. Put 3 halves in for x. If you do pi over 3 times 3 halves, the 3s would cancel out. You'd have pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And you look, if you get two points on this curve, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Because we move in, uh oh, say it with me, quarter period increments. I always put the period at the fourth hash mark, cut it in half, cut it in half. Well, this one's got a lot going on. We've got an A is 2, we've got a B is a half, we've got a C is pi over 6. I'm telling you what, this graph is going to move to the left. All right. So the amplitude is 2, because, you know, well, that's not too tough. The period is 2 pi over a half. B is a half. So that's 2 pi times reciprocal, 2 over 1. That ends up being 4 pi. So that will be nice, though, because you'll put 4 pi out there. Half of that's 2 pi. Then you have 1 pi. So you'll have 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi in both directions. Ah, but the phase shift's nasty. So it's negative C over B. Now my C is positive. So that's going to be negative pi over 6 over a half. Multiply by the reciprocal. Our phase shift is going to be a nasty little negative pi over 3. Uh, okay, let's see how this looks. So I put 4 pi out here. Oh, we talked about this. Cut that in half, cut that in half. That's not too bad. Negative 2 to 2 on the y. We have to move this origin, that point that would normally at the origin, we have to move it left pi over 3. I don't know, what is that, right about there? It's about one-third of the distance between uh, 0 and negative pi. So what would be a smart move here is to divide these all into thirds. And so that's what I did. That's what these little, little tick marks are. I divided everything into thirds, and I'm going to move my origin negative pi over 3 radians right to there. I'm still going to move to the right, though, and I'm going to move in quarter period increments. I'll never get back to pi or 2 pi. Look, I'm a, th I'm a third of, a, of, a, of an interval here to the, to the left. I'll be a third of the interval here, a third of an interval here. And so as I move to the right, I'll still move in quarter period increments, which, by the way, is pi. So 30, 60, there it, there it is right there, right there. I'm going to move right there. I'm sorry, 60, 61, 20, 180. Let's see what this looks like. So I go there. I go 1, 2, 3, there I am. 1, 2, 3, there I am. 1, 2, 3, there I am. I'm moving in quarter period increments. If you can get that first anchor point, and in this case I was moving to the right, then you'll be in great shape. Hey, that concludes Lesson 10. Please get started on Lesson 10 homework.